integration of modernization, transformation, and resilience. For the same, I'd like to invite on uh, stage uh, the session chair, Vikas Gadre, senior adjunct faculty, NMIMS, in conversation with Mr. Manish Gupta, group CIO, Aditya Billa Group, for sharing his thoughts and insights. Let's welcome the gentlemen on stage, Mr. Vikas Gadre and uh, Mr. Manish Gupta. Let's have a round of applause for the two gentlemen joining us on stage. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome, Manish. Thank you. Thank it's you. been a pleasure to to be with you here today. I mean, you are a, you had a, a very large conglomerate, really speaking, I mean, the Aditya Birla group. And in a sense, uh, in order to uh, decide on modernization and the current wave of newer technologies of artificial intelligence and IoT and AR, VR and everything else coming in, it must be a very challenging task for you. So I would like you to explain to us, I mean, like Mr. Uppal explained for Maruti a couple of minutes back, uh, you must be getting a, a lot of requests from group companies, be it from the cement conglomerate or from fashion side or retail side. How do you actually decide on prioritizing this and strategizing as to which one of these modernization initiatives should be really taken up? Yeah, no, thank you, uh, Vikas, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. I know uh, it's a session you all want to finish very fast, so, so we'll take a lot of time, okay, but just, just a joke. But I think uh, just to give you a structure of our group, so we have uh, many listed companies which you know about, like Ultratech, Indalco, Grass, um, Fashion Retail, Capital, and these are all very different uh, businesses, you know. Uh, you can't compare metals to cement or to uh, capital. Um, and um, uh, so I think the prioritization happens at the company level because finally uh, they need to make money. Uh, the true north is shareholder value. As long as it cre is creating value, it's very easy to decide. And uh, I think uh, the way our business runs is uh, always on that matrix at the end. Uh, rest all are the goals we all have to ensure that there's a value at the end for the shareholders. Because if you keep a very simple matrix, I think the life is easy. So if it makes sense to invest, it's okay, we do. If it doesn't make sense to invest, we don't do. So I don't think that's a challenge because the resource allocation and prioritization generally happens at the business level. So if some business is making more money, they are able to afford uh, more investment. And, uh, and uh, if they invest more to generate more money, that's also okay. So I think, uh, I think it's a very simple, simple rule we follow, yeah. The, from what you have said so far, in terms of strategizing and the businesses can afford, and obviously it would mean that uh, uh, many more projects will go to uh, companies which are, or the businesses which are making more money and are prioritizing it. But there could be some emerging opportunities coming up. Maybe with there are newer technologies, there could be a game changer, etc. Uh, do you give any special attention to that? Does the top management uh, give any special attention for these newer technologies so that they actually gain more market share, and etc.? No, absolutely. I think uh, uh, as the topic was modernization and transformation together. I think there cannot be any transformation without modernization because if you look at modernization that's more inward looking, uh, you need to modernize your setup, the IT stack, the organization, the underlying technologies, the ways of working, the culture, the funding, whatever. But at the same time, the impact of it is going to be on transformation, uh, which is the business value really, which is the impact and the outcome we are looking at. So I think uh, we realize that at the group level, uh, there's some essential building blocks uh, which need to be modernized across all businesses, uh, which includes a lot of softer parts as well. For example, the organization structures, I'm working very heavily on that, and we are changing it slowly, org, org by org, just to ensure that our IT leadership has the right uh, uh, seat at the table. Uh, uh, similarly, going down to even the lower levels, that becomes equally important. Uh, the funding rules, okay. Uh, the, uh, the way you set up the culture uh, where IT is not only the order taker but is a value driver. 
Uh, these are softer aspects. But on the, on the hard aspects, the cloud adoption is very big. Uh, you know, when I joined a few years back, at a group level, I proposed a lot of new things like including, uh, giving a simple thing like uh, setting up an API platform, uh, having a, a complete DevOps, uh, you know, a stack, uh, and, uh, and including many other emerging technologies like AR, VR, or low-code, no-code, and now Gen AI. I'll give you some examples how they've been used, you know, because uh, uh, last year we set up our B2B uh, business uh, on construction space, which is called Build Up Pivot. So it's a fairly large marketplace for construction. They're doing very well, actually. Just in six months of launch, they're clocking close to more than 150 crores GMV per month. So it's a fairly uh, fast-growing business. And uh, we use all this. So we didn't buy anything COTS, we didn't buy. It's an ERP-free stack working extremely well, and we could put it up in five months compared to what others have taken two years by buying technology and trying to do it. So I think the modernization really helped convert it into a true uh, business uh, you know, stack. Uh, we recently launched our B the D2C uh, app on financial sectors called ABCD. If uh, uh, many of you would have used it or not used it, but please go and use it, it's very nice actually. So again, we used a lot of uh, the modern concepts, including our complete low-code platform. It's built on low-code. It's completely cloud-native. So again, this would not have happened if we had not invested early in some of the very fundamental uh, you know, platforms and technologies. And that continues to happen across all our businesses, yeah. uh, which are, you know, kind of uh, setting up new businesses and growing very fast. Yeah, yeah I think uh, you, I want to take a cue from what you said just a minute back, saying that what others may have taken two years, you've managed to do it in five months. And I know that uh, as a group and as you as a person, um, you don't seem to advertise the great amount of work that you keep on doing. But I'm sure people in the audience here would be, be delighted to know if you could just enlighten us with some examples from either fashion, cement, or manufacturing industries where this modernization has actually helped the group in uh, uh, increasing productivity, increasing profits, getting bottom line higher, etc. So those examples would definitely uh, would definitely delight many of us. No, absolutely. I think uh, I'll... Uh, I can speak throughout the day, uh, but uh, uh, now uh, we invested big time in IoT in all our manufacturing, whether it's cement or metals or, or pulp and paper, which are heavy in manufacturing. They're fairly large uh, setups, uh, including our uh, you know, global businesses like Novalis, uh, which are based for aluminum recycling. They are the biggest recycler of aluminum in the world, by the way. And uh, like all Coke cans world over, are recycled by them and converted into pure aluminum again. Now, uh, of course, IoT is very big and it's, it's there for, if you look at our uh, cement, uh, you know, we have a large, large capacity. And the way we have grown, uh, we are around 150 million tons, which is almost double than the number two, number three, number four players put together. And that growth has happened just because of the amount of money we invested in our tech stack, because to scale up at that level, of complexity uh, is not possible. And, and uh, we are also the cost leaders in most of our categories, which is uh, not coming just out of, you know, sheer uh, shouting and howling at the shop floor. It's coming out of uh, real tech, which is happening. So I think uh, uh, there's a clear numbers, as I said. And, uh, and uh, I think same in fashion and retail. Uh, if you look at, we also have a very large D2C portfolio, uh, which you don't see. It's a business we run called Tomorrow. We acquired 15, 16 companies, for example, like Bevakuf. Uh, these are very fancy names, by the way. So uh, nothing to do with, the, with me. But uh, uh, I think there are, there are a lot of things which are going on, uh, you know, uh, in terms of tech play, our B2B uh, initiative, B2C initiatives, our, our entire financial services changing the model from distributor-led to also going direct to the consumer. So I think uh, the examples are enormous to to look at modernization impact on the real business value. Yeah. Great. Uh, I'm sure when you are actually managing so many initiatives across 
such diverse business areas, there would be risks involved. How do you sort of mitigate these risks? Because whenever you take, there's always a possibility of failure, and therefore that failure can be looked down upon, especially in case of modernization. So how do you try and evaluate risk yeah. and mitigate risk? Hmm. So I think one is a hard risk, which could be, let's say, cyber risk or uh, you know financial risk or something uh, which we manage, uh, of course, by investing uh, in right people and right technology. Uh, more than that, uh, I think, uh, uh, you know, I have a framework for ensuring that our projects don't fail, um, and which go through an acid test, what I call it. You know, acid test would mean even uh, every project having a right sponsor, which may sound very easy, but many times many projects don't have, uh, including a right project manager, including the right funding, including the right KPI, the value they're going to be creating. I think if you follow your portfolio correctly by some commonsensical principles, uh, with good planning and putting the right people, uh, I don't think uh, uh, projects tend to fail. And touch wood, I think most of the projects in my life have succeeded in some way or the other. So, but I think it all goes to the meticulous planning and, uh, and, and the team and the people. If you identify the right people, I think you get the work done. So my life is very easy because I have a great team. I mean, that, that yeah. is actually an understatement. I don't think a group CIO's life is very easy at all in any case. Now, I think we are running out of time. So I have just one last question. And uh, uh, see, it, when these modern technologies uh, improve productivity and efficiency and bottom line, etc., it's relatively easy to get support from the top management. But do you face situations where, with the, all the buzz going around that the technologies will eat away jobs, any kind of a resistance from the middle management or the lower management? Not really. We have not faced any till now. And uh, I think, as I said, if you're very clear in terms of uh, the outcome and ability to sell the outcome linked to uh, what you're doing and why you are doing, I think life is easy because uh, we are also very uh, uh, focused organization. Uh, uh, so, we, for example, we don't speak much in the forums. We don't tend to advertise what we are doing in Gen AI. We may do maybe 200 use cases, but we'll not speak about it. So, things like that. So, so I think uh, we are very focused. And uh, as long as it makes sense, we do it. If it doesn't make sense, we don't do it. We are not carried by the hype at all. Uh, if I have to stop something, I'll stop it despite of the world making noise. So I think the conviction is very high in the organization. Our chairman has gone uh, in public to state that we are, will be a digital first conglomerate in five years, and we are working towards it. So I think the attraction is very high. Uh, the challenge is for our teams to deliver and to live up to the promise we have made uh, to the shareholders and to our management. And, uh, and that's what keeps us busy. But I don't think there's a management uh, lack of support. And I don't think any organization today faces that challenge. It's more about the creativity and the ability to sell correctly and deliver on the promise. Uh, because if you do it, I think you, it's, a, it's a vicious circle. Yeah. Thank you very much, Manish. Thanks a lot. It was a pleasure talking to you. Same here, Vikas. All the best for all your Thank you. projects and endeavors in group companies. All the best. Thank you, gentlemen. Let's have a round of applause once again for the gentlemen. Gentlemen, a quick photo opportunity.